Welcome to this demonstration on one of the Allen Brain Atlas resources. My name is Terry Gilbert, and I'm the application scientist at the Allen Institute for Brain Science. This isn't a typical training, but I will run through a use case of how to use the Allen Mouse Brain Connectivity Atlas. So first, I want to give you a little background on the Allen Institute for Brain Science. The mission of the Allen Institute is to accelerate the understanding of how the human brain works in health and in disease. And we are using a big science approach to forward this mission. And what we do is we create useful public resources to answer fundamental questions about the brain and also to assist you in contributing to this mission. So how we do that is, a, is an approach here at the Institute that incorporates experimentalists, who work really closely with theorists and computationalists determining a model of how the, how the brain works. We are a nonprofit research organization. We're committed to making tools and information available to, neuro, to the neuroscience community. So our business model is distinct from either academia or industry in that we are project focused and we're milestone driven. And we have had 30 on-time data releases in the last 10 years. So our multidisciplinary team approaches the scientific questions that address how the brain works from many, many different dimensions. And we are growing. So if you're interested in finding out more about the Allen Institute, please go to our careers website. At the Allen Institute, we absolutely want to understand phenomena such as consciousness and behavior and thought and, you know, really, how does the brain work? And uh, 10 years ago, we started out with the very basics. We started out at the gene level, trying to understand just the real fundamentals. And we really are systematically working our way across this, this page. And our plan for the next decade is to concentrate on understanding the components of the brain. So we're starting with cell types, right? And on understanding the computation. So how does the brain process all the information coming in? How does the brain talk to itself? Right? We're, we want to understand the different circuits. We're also going to be focusing on cognition, which requires understanding the dynamics of the brain, understanding how it all works together. And, and we also are, we're starting to look at cognition in behaving mice. So these are the resources that are currently available to you. And many of you are probably familiar with some of these resources. So our in-situ hybridization databases include the adult mouse atlas, the developing mouse atlas, and the mouse spinal cord atlas. In human gene expression, we have the primarily microarray human brain atlas, as well as the developing human brain atlas, which is an RNA-seq and microarray database. We also have a microarray and ISH atlas and rhesus macaque and smaller projects and resources. And our latest project, one that departs from gene expression, is the mouse connectivity atlas, which is a resource that traces connections in the adult mouse brain. And I'll go more deeply into that resource shortly. And currently we have about 50,000 unique visits per month. Um, you know, visitors who use our suite of atlases and they hail from all over the globe and from all different parts of the neuroscience community, from big pharma to industry to academia. So let me get into the Allen Mouse Brain Connectivity Atlas. This atlas maps the long range neuronal connections in the adult mouse brain. And this project includes almost 1800 experiments in which recombinant adeno associated virus was injected into approximately 300 brain regions. And this virus had the effect of filling the infected cells with green fluorescent protein, which was then imaged through the brain in a high throughput manner. Each of these experiments was processed and registered into our three dimensional reference space and then published online for you and for your analysis. So the first phase of this project imaged projections primarily in wild type mice. And uh, in this phase of the project, any cell that was infected with the AAV virus started, started to express the green fluorescent protein. We did a comparison of this particular method with the conventional tracer VDA, 
And that's also online for you to, for you to look at. And then in the second phase, we wanted to understand the cell type specific mapping of projections. So in those experiments, we used Cree dependent lines and Cree dependent um, uh, recombinant adeno associated vi virus to look at specific contributions of different cell lines to projections into different areas of the brain. And then we imaged these experiments in a high throughput manner. It took about 18 hours to image an entire brain. And so we used a serial two photon tomography to cut down on photo bleaching. And we measured the brain at 100 micron sections. Now, we coupled this with a unique microscope from, from tissue vision called the tissue site imaging system. And this is a, this one actually shows you how it works. Once you've imaged, there's a, there's a vibratome on the microscope that will section the brain after you've imaged it so that you can actually look at the fluorescence in the brain without having, having to manage for any deformation due to the sectioning. And so basically we already have the Z plane registered perfectly, which, you know, 100 microns isn't really high resolution, but, it, but because of the way we, we measured the fluorescence, it, uh, it works quite nicely in the system. So we measure 75 microns into the block face. It's, a, it's approximately one micron that we measure. And then, like I said, the sections are 100 microns thick. So what you get is 140 coronal sections with both the autofluorescence, which we measure in the red channel, as well as the signal, the green fluorescence, that we measure in the green. And we take these two-dimensional images and we process them through our informatics data processing pipeline. So this includes image segmentation. So we've got an automated way to look for signal in the brain. We subtract out the background. And then we take that signal and we register it into our three-dimensional reference space. Also in our three-dimensional reference space is, uh, is our reference atlas. So you can start to see both structures where you're seeing signal. And also when you have all of the data the way that we have, there's, there's different ways that you can look at the entire data set that will give you an understanding of uh, the different projections and the topology of the brain. So some of the analysis that we allow you to do, given the way we've got this data set put together, is look at several different experiments at once. This is a an example where we're showing you five different cortical injections and showing you primarily how they project to the, uh, the other side of the brain. Another thing that you can do with this particular data set is that you can look at the topology of the brain. So in this, in this image, one of the things you can see is that there are many cortical projections to the caudopotamen. And you can start to see the, the topology of where in the cortex are they projecting to in the caudopotamen. Also, we know that there are a lot of uh, corticothalamic projections. So you can also see that topology, where in the, in the thalamus are different areas of the cortex projecting to. So this demonstration addresses a common question I get while I'm training scientists on the data set, which is what can we do with this data? So using information that's already known, such as, for, for example, this particular circuit diagram, you, know, uh, you can confirm the connections that we already know about, that we've determined through other kinds of experiments, that you've determined through other kinds of experiments, as well as you can explore the data to explore new questions, find out new connections, right? develop new hypotheses and lines of research. So this diagram illustrates a complex pathway that regulates movement. This circuit diagram is the, the basal ganglia motor circuit diagram. And the primary input structure of the basal ganglia, which is the striatum, right? this di diagram shows how activation of neurons in this structure in a dopamine-dependent fashion either excite the thalamic neurons via the globus pallidus internal segment and substantia nigra through the direct pathway or 
that causes inhibition of these same neurons through the indirect pathway, which involves the globus pallidus external segment, the subthalamic nuclei, and the substantia nigra compacta part. So this play of excitation and inhibition is reported to be behind motivational movement through the output via the thalamus back to the cortex. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump into the atlas. And where we're going to start is from the caudocutaneous in the striatum. Okay, so this is the landing page of the connectivity atlas. And this atlas is a little bit distinct from our other atlases in that it's not so much a search, an atlas that you search through as you filter out experiments. So what you're looking at here is all of the experiments that we have in this particular data set. They're colored by the reference atlas as well as the sizes are proportional to the ejection site. And there's almost 1,800 experiments. So the first thing we want to do is we just want to filter down so that we can start to browse these experiments. So we're going to look for experiments that are just in the cardiocutainment. And now we're just showing experiments that are in the cardiocutainment. Mind you, there's still 45 experiments, which is a lot of experiments to go through and just individually browsing them. So we can also filter by just looking at the wild type. We're going to start with just looking at the wild type cell lines. And now what we're looking at is 16 experiments. In 16 experiments, you can browse through each of these individual experiments um, without, much, without much issue. And if you look down the list, one of the things you'll notice is there's experiments that have the primary injection structure as the cardiocutainment, and then they have several secondary structures. But the cardiocutainment is nice in that it's a rather large structure. So you really can find, as you can see down here, injections, experiments that are, have the injection site solely in the cardiocutainment. So we're going to take a look at one of those. And as you click on either the, the sphere in the, in the image that shows all the results or on the experiment in the list, what you bring up is a, a, both a two-dimensional as well as a three-dimensional representation of that particular experiment. And you can see there's the cardiocutamen, the injection site in the cardiocutamen. You can also see that there is a signal that's showing in the globus pallidus. You can also see substantia nigra. So this is a really quick way for you to take a look at what, what the experiments, what those, the, these experiments are doing. And you can also take a look at this particular experiment and any of our experiments in our three-dimensional atlas viewer. So what you're looking at here is the three-dimensional projection of this particular experiment. You've got the orientation of the experiment up here. And the, you can see the injection site, the cardiocutamen, is represented by the spheres. You can also see little cubes that represent the projections. This one's to the globus pallidus. You can also down, see down here the substantia nigra. So you can start to put the experiments into our three-dimensional viewer. I like to spin the brain. So that you can actually look at the experiments in three dimensions and get a sense of the projections that are, that are going through the brain. So now I want to look at what the atlas can tell us about the dopamine dependent functions. So to do that, we're now going to go look at specific Cree lines. And we've looked at over 100 Cree lines, so there, there's likely going to be something that may be useful for you. Um, and again, there might not be. You'll have to base, base it on the experiments that we've already done. So let's go look at dopamine receptor Cree lines.
And again, you can see that there are several experiments that are solely in the cotopetamin. Let's take a look at this dopamine, uh, dopamine receptor D1. And when you look at this experiment, you'll again see these, these, this cell type projects to the globus pallidus, the internal segment, as well as the substantia nigra. And if we go take a look at the dopamine receptor 2 Cree line, one of the things that you'll see is that there's this experiment starts in the cotopetamin, but only goes to the globus pallidus external segment, which is what you would expect from the, the dopamine receptor, receptor line. Now, one of the things you might notice is there's signal way back in this area. So if you click here, you'll notice that there's signal here. We can take a look at this in the high resolution image viewer. It opens it up in a new window. And one of the things that you'll see here is that there are cell bodies that are infected here. Now it's not a retrograde infection, but one of the things that we do know is that there are major projections from the VTA. This experiment tells us that it's in dopamine receptor 2. And using this, this particular view, you can follow the signal. Sometimes the signal disappears, and you can go look at the segmentation of the experiment and just follow the signal along. until you come back into the striatum. So this is something that's known. And so you can start to confirm what's already known. But when you look at the experiments this way, one of the things that you're gonna to start to notice is there are questions like, what is this? What's this signal down here in this particular area? When we look at it against the reference atlas, we can see that this area is, is someplace in the substantia innominata. And that brings up a question, what is, what is this particular signal? You know, it allows you to start to be able to ask questions looking at individual experiment. So now what we wanna do is we wanna take a look at injection sites in the globus pallidus external segment. So I'll get rid of the Cree lines. And let's go look in the globus pallidus external segment. And you'll notice that there are only four experiments in this particular region. And only one of those is experiments is in the wild type line. So let's take a look at the, the wild type. And what you can see from here is we have, we have projections to the cotopetamin, to different regions in the thalamus, as well as the subthalamic nucleus. Again, as a reminder, we've got, this is, this is a projection that was known from the globus pallidus into the, the subthalamic. And again, you can bring this experiment into the three-dimensional viewer, and it, and it starts to, you know, show you different different projections. We've got projections here into the cortex, many projections here into the thalamus, you know, and it, it does get it does get pretty hairy when once you start putting up a lot of experiments. So you can, you know, add add back or add as many experiments as you'd like. So next what I'd like to do is look at injection sites in the subthalamic nucleus. subthalamic nucleus. And again, we are only looking at three experiments. It's a, it's a rather small nucleus. But you'll notice that there's one experiment that's in that the subthalamic nucleus and in the globus pallidus, which is one of the structures that's in the basal ganglia. So let's take a look at that experiment. 
And in that experiment, what we notice is we've got projections that go to the globus pallidus external segment, as well as to the substantia nigra. Now, the substantia nigra we knew. You can see that from, from this diagram. But we don't actually show anything in this particular diagram. Not to say that it's not known. But again, it allows you to go into the experiments and start to ask questions. And if you take this particular experiment into, into here, into the three-dimensional viewer, so you'll see you've got the subthalamic nucleus as the injection site. And you'll see primarily what you see are inject are projections that go to the substantia nigra, that area that we looked at. You've also got projections that go probably that go somewhere into the midbrain into the thalamus. And you'll also notice that there's a lot of these the, the projections here that go back into the globus pallidus external segment. And if you look at the injection site, it's the globus pallidus internal segment here. So it's, and it's this, the three-dimensional viewer in our informatics are really good at pinpointing the injection structures and where they go to, where they project to. And again, just being able to see this in three dimensions and being able to look at it from many different views starts to give you a real sense of the topo topography of the brain and how everything is laid out. We're going to look at projections to the substantia nigra reticular part. And again, it's a very small structure, and we only have three experiments. However, we do have an experiment that, that resides solely in the substantia nigra. Now, mind you, it's in both the reticular part as well as the compactor part. And it is in the wild-type mice. So when you look at this experiment, what you see is you've got projections to the cotopotamin. And you've also got a rather strong projection here into uh, the thalamus, right? Which is what which is what we expected to see projections into the thalamus here. So one of the things. So we also know that there are you know earlier when I showed you the the corticothalamic projections, which is why I didn't start in the cortex because then you really do get a hairball when you're looking at all of the different connections. But one of the things that you can do is if you, you can pick a site and then look to see a virtual retrograde uh, injection site. So let's, let's look at the projections here that come from the isocortex. So now what you're looking at at this particular site, you've got injections that come from this area of the cortex, which is primarily the motor cortex as well as the, the sensory motor cortex. So you can start to see the topology from different experiments and also it, this allows you to find injection sites that are very close to your, where you, the projections that you're interested in, in looking at. So you can create circuits. You can also, instead of looking at all the experiments that project to this particular point that we've got highlighted with the crosshairs, but you can also find injection sites here we'll just go to the entire brain. You can find injection sites that are, that are very close to that particular spot. So we've got it at one millimeter, but you can actually take it down very small. So you can look at, like I said, you can trace, trace connections to very specific regions. Okay, so thank you so much for attending this demonstration. It's a very short demonstration. But um, if you're interested in learning more about this resource, you're welcome to go to the website. Explore it for yourself, brain-map.org, the connectivity atlas.